was one of the things I, I wanted to to expose with my music. My music is not trend, it's not old, it's not uh, future music, uh -huh. it's just timeless music. Yes. Timeless music to dance, to have a joy in the night. Yes. To, I don't know, to have a deep clothes. And a little bit clothes, sexy, yeah? The, the house, yeah. they're like, I, I love groovy. it. I mean, and, I love and, it. And, <laughs> I, can, I can tell, I mean, I, I've yeah. listened to you a thousand times and my friend, you are groovy. You make me dance all the time. Yeah, so. I, I always try to to explain that to all the people who likes like you know the melodic techno, dark disco. <laughs> they tell me why you didn't like those kind of 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 uh, styles, and I was like, have no soul, man. No, it doesn't have. <laughs> listen it. to the hi hats, listen to the snares and yeah. stuff. And the house is moving all the time, this and that, and. And this new trend uh, rhythms is like so square. It's like, it's like ta -ta 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but I, I, I think it's just I not for you. It's not for me. Yeah. Hello and welcome. So, so we're so happy to have Pinto here in Behind the Decks with Susan So. Thank you so much for following us. We're so happy to have you around. How are you doing, Sus? Oh, I am good today. This is such a nice experience. We have one of our really, really, truly own here in Guadalajara at Dansu Guadalajara. Pintu, thank you so much for having us over here or being with us over here at Behind the Decks. Thank you guys for inviting me. Yeah, thank you for your time. I'm so happy to, to do these kind of things for all the people to know all the histories behind the careers of the careers. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because <clears throat> you... Um, have been in the scene for a very long time. You have been around yeah. for a very long time. Um, you're also quite quite a private person. A little bit, yeah. A little bit I'm not like uh, too much social ah. media right. guy. Yeah. I'm trying because you know that time change, so See. you have to. I, I like these little videos that you. How do you time lapse? Time lapse yeah. like that? It's yeah. like fast. That you're in the studio and then you take a break and then you take a nap and then you, you're inspired again after a coffee and I, I love yeah, those videos I, I, that you're making. I wanted to try to not to do these things all that all the people do, you know, like doing the selfie or uh -huh. dancing with a trend track or something. With a cat. <laughs> I wanted to, to show the people how I do in my place, but with a little bit of, of twist of you know, funny. Yeah. Not too boring. Like, you know, just uh -huh. twitching buttons on the studios and, you know, yeah. like doing all the, all these things. I think it more. works. Re I, I was laughing. I liked it. They're really nice because, you know, in, in, in these situations, you find out a little bit about who you mm -hmm. are as a person. You know, just, you have like a, a sneak peek and also about where does your work really come from? Do you yeah. think? You know, it's it's a lot about experimenting, don't you think? Yeah, I I, I, I think I, I, I don't hate social media, mm -hmm. but I try to link all the things on social media, my social media, with music. Right. Because, right. you know, I'm a producer and I'm a DJ. I will not record in a video of me, you know, grabbing garbage in the beach so <laughs> the people can say, like, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I try to do all the things linked by music. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right, and if there's something really nice that you do, I mean, it's it has to be, you know, again, linked with music as well, you know. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a festival or a club or you're just playing around with your things at the, at the studio. It's just a matter of the love of your, of your music and in the separation between the personal life and the, the, the life as an artist. It really is. But it's really cool that you have a little insight, like literally into your... It's your studio bedroom, right? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. like a, a pretty intimate look into your into your life, like yeah, that. Yeah, my bed it's is cool. just, just behind. Yeah. my table studio. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, so I, nice. I like that a lot. I thought that's, that's quite intimate. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. And uh, there's there, there's something I wanted to ask you. Like like we said of of camera, uh, the first time I listened to you. I mean, your career has been uh, much longer than that. But uh, the first time that I really, really listened to you play was at Bar Americas, and yeah. you finished with that track, uh, "Black Water," and, and I was just amazed of of, of uh, amazed uh, you know, about that. First of all, about that track and just the ambience that it created. But I would love to know about how it all started, my friend. Yeah, how I started. 
Um, as many people know, maybe not too much, but I'm also a graphic designer, a graphic designer. And all my stuff I do in life, I think, almost everything starts by accident, almost. I start as a, as a graphic designer almost by accident because okay. I buy I buy a computer with a Corel Draw into mm-hmm. so I start to design. Right. By learning by myself, and the DJ thing was kind of uh, similar. I was uh, working in a magazine. Okay. In a alternative culture magazine back in my I don't know 21, 22 years mm-hmm. old, and. That was the first time I had like a really good internet connection on the office of the magazine. See. So I I just came to into the office and download all the music I wanted <laughs> to listen, you know? Uh-huh. And all the office listened my music, like not by chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, <laughs> I am selecting yeah, today. <laughs> I am the music manager here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the magazine always had uh, like the anniversary party right? every year. And the owner of the magazine loved electronic music also. So they make this party every year with DJs. One international DJ, maybe a cheap DJ from San Diego, Los Angeles. And then another uh, Mexican national you mm-hmm. know, from Mexico City. And then a local. Cool. And then the first year I worked in the, in the magazine, they asked me, you want to put music in the anniversary party and I was like I'm not a DJ I not even know how to use the equipment and stuff that you always put music here and you have to put music I don't care if you don't know how to mix know how to mix how to use the equipment the guy of the of the sound system they, he will tell you how to <laughs> how to mix and I was Okay. Okay. <laughs> he gave me money, so I grab a tower of CDs, you know, Virgin CDs, and I started to burn all this music. It was not uh, dance music. It was not house or techno. I loved house and techno since the beginning. Mm-hmm. But the the things I loved in back in the days of to listen in, in, in the office in my house was jungle, ah, yeah. chill out, trip uh, trip hop. Uh, ambient and uh, EDM stuff like that uh-huh. and it was perfect to start at night you know uh, because they open doors at 9 p.m. so I start with trip hop ambient stuff I arrive to the party go with the sound system guy hey how, how, <laughs> I can't. how do you do this <laughs> Teach me how to use these things. Uh, this is the cue, means like pause or stop and play. And this is the volume for this, this is the volume for that. That's all you know to, you have to know. Okay. <laughs> and it was like, okay. I, I always, obviously not, make not a mix set, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But was like. Selecting. Selecting music and crossfade. And that was the, the first time I put music in front of people and then the people will start to come and then like in an hour maybe hour and a half Mm -hmm. I started to play like this naked music house so slowly uh, kind of broken beats Uh and I started to see the people doing this you know and (laughs) and moving the feet and it was like I belong here. Yeah, yeah. And since, hey, boss, I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I'm out. That was me, my first time, and I never got down of the DJ booth. How old were you then? Like, I don't remember exactly, but I was like 21 or 22. Was not too young, mm-hmm. but yeah. I mean, for music, it's not beige. So I finished the party. Uh, and the next day I call a friend because of the magazine I know a, a lot of DJs and producers and people around the parties yeah and I was hey you I need to rent a couple of techniques and a mixer why why because I want to be a, I want to be a DJ I want to try it. I want to <laughs> try to be a DJ really yeah I have a couple extra in my house come come for them and 
I spent all my money buying like 15 records. All my money. Oh. That means that I have to go from the school to the office, to the office to my house. I have any, any money because <laughs> I spent all my money on records. And they borrowed me these techniques and I have it like for a month and a half. Yeah. He teach me like, this is the cue, this is the, you know, the beach. Yeah. The, the basic stuff. Yeah. And they left and me. And go. And go. Yeah. And that's the start. Wow! Yeah, by oh. accident, almost. How long ago was so cool. this? Almost twenty years. Twenty years. And you never I'm looked back. Now, so it's a long time ago. My, <laughs> my friend. It's this, a nice story, eh? Yeah, that's so cool. I don't, I don't, I don't recall any anything like that. You know, like in the past podcasts that we've been, you know, we've seen people that were in a part of a rock band. We've seen people that uh, fell in love with partying. I also played in a punk band when I was like 16. Uh -huh. Then I quit the music because I was playing the guitar and singing uh -huh. in a punk band. You know, in the, the secundaria, yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like my stuff. When I met electronic music at 16, it was like, wow. Wow, yes. Yeah. Do you remember any, any tracks? From when you were younger, even before you started being a DJ, yeah, I played. You... I played those tracks all the time. And you, can you tell us a couple of them that they like they just make you dance, make you happy? The one, the Blackwater, Knights of Jaguar by Rolando, nice. Deep Burn by Pepe Braddock, Kevin Just, uh -huh. Fresh and Low, bro. The fresh thing and is, low. when I when I buy my my first package of vinyls, was all. 10, 10 years back catalog was not actual oh, right, music like, on yeah, yeah. the year so right. was old, old school house or yeah. sort of I always loved like this house from the um, 90s. ends of 90s mm -hmm. and yeah. beginning of 2000s yeah. for me it's the best the best uh, era of electronic music you know uh, there was there, there was a, a little debate yeah. in one of our past podcasts with uh, with mm -hmm. a friend Uh, you made me know him. His name is Drome. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about the sound of Guadalajara. Ah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think is the sound of Guadalajara? I don't think. Well, right now we don't have a sound, maybe, or maybe we do. Mm -hmm. You know, the this thing is really a trend right now. We call it uh, dark disco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it still really trendy now? Is it not like sort of no, 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 no. all the young people? No, oh, like I'm not young anymore. Stuff. Oopsie, so. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> no, even the if you if you know a new DJ, if you know me, something starting to play, you don't even have to ask why he's playing because it's really, really trendy. It's, I think it's more more trendy than melodic techno. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of Guadalajara sound right yeah. now. Back in the days, was like this San Francisco East Coast house. Mm -hmm. When I when I start to go to the parties, was this kind of house and Detroit techno. Right. I remember one time when I was seventeen on Friday, in one party was T One Thousand, and the next day Juan Atkinson. Like, wow! Fuck. <laughs> Shit. So the yeah. techno. And so. then the next week, Kevin Just in another party. Okay. It was really, really, really nice. Yeah. 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 And, 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 yeah. Yeah. I heard those stories. That and, used to be really cool. And you know, it's 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 really interesting because uh, at the end of the day, you got, I would say, you enriched your your background of music and your love for house music. Uh, with this type of parties, I, I'm, I'm guessing, right? Because yeah. since you started with with music that was maybe from 10 years before, and then you start getting to this these parties that are from DJs that are big names, yeah, historic yeah. names, uh, you know, and fundamental. I would say fundamental names in in the history of electronic of course, music. Yeah, they are. The masters, the beginners, the yeah. Juan Atkins, you know, Juan Atkins. Yeah, it's just, it's just a 
<laughs> yeah. He's a sergeant. The source, <laughs> yeah. You know what's really sad when you chat with the new generations? They don't know anything from five years back or, or yeah. older. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sad. Because everything goes so fast now and everybody wants to be up to date with what's hip now. Actually, it's pop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is the conversation we had with yeah. Hugo yeah. the other day, your photographer. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about pop. Like, what is pop? Yeah. And, and, and do we like it? And, and is it messing the scene of art up? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a, a, lot of, a lot of friends who play, like, you know, melodic techno, this new techno. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to it, it was like, oh, this track from 15 years ago kind of fits. Perfect, <laughs> right here. It's very trancy, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very trancy. And I was like, hey, you know this? No, who is... Uh, you have to know this. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. It, it, it sounds it, like... like <laughs> what, you're, what you're doing sounds like something from, from yeah, this time. Yeah, and it fits perfect, you know? Yeah. The last Friday I was to see Deborah Luca. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Not by my choice, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to... She plays The Age of Love some kind of remix mm -hmm. okay. that track you know release was released at 96 the original track all the people think it's like uh -huh. her track yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nah, <laughs> yeah if you knew not by if any you chance. only knew uh, yeah. you know there, there's there's something that happened to me when 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 i was starting really and this is a uh, i had a, i had a blessing i would i'm gonna say i used to live in in, in the states And my first parties, my electric, my first electronic music parties were in Chicago, <laughs> and <laughs> it was it was great. There was there was this club called Excalibur, and it has uh, it's a big club that was there when the warehouse was there. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's a club with seven levels, and each level plays a different type of music. In the, the, the first level, you go like like disco, and you have old people going there and having. You know, having fun, but once you go up and up and up, it becomes more underground and more underground. And then the last floor, Darker. yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just house music, uh, f and and techno from Detroit and from and from Ch and and all tracks from Chicago. Yeah. And this was the first time that I that I listened to to electronic music, to you know, truly electronic music. I was like 20 years old, and right after that, after that day, what I started to do is looking at. Just, just watching documentaries about yeah. electronic music. And it was so fascinating. So great. And it's so sad that just sometimes they just don't want to educate themselves. I'm not saying I'm the one that knows the most, but... No, but well, the, yeah. no that's the thing. The people, but there's a beauty behind it. The people it. goes to see the DJs. They know uh, through the social media. Right. And I always say that to them, like, Go to the Paris, listen to the Paris, and then choose what you like, yeah. not what the social media tells, tells you to you. like. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you can change the millions of people. It's the yeah. platform right now. Yeah. Instagram, social it's, media. It's weird, it's isn't it? Because you would say you would go to see the artist because of its music. Yeah. Not because of the no, way they present themselves so in social media, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the whole poser <laughs> problem, actually. You know, let's slice into that. Like the whole poser yeah. problem. People go to parties to pose, right? Yeah. Now the young kids have that way of thinking. Like, uh, take the pictures and be in the party just to be seen. Yeah, but you know, we also, the all DJs, I'm not considering myself at all an all DJ, but We we have to do something like that because there's a, I always say the electronic music is for young people. Not not no I'm not saying that if you're old you can be a DJ, but the dance floor people is always young. Mm -hmm. Always. When I started I started to go to go parties I was sixteen. Yeah. And then ten years later The people on the dance floor was 16, yeah, yeah, again, yeah, yeah, or yeah, 17, yeah. 18, you know, 20. Yeah. So you have to move and adapt all this communication for younger people. That is so interesting. And yeah. there's so many old DJs saying like, no, this is shit, and I don't want... But they are doing the, the things like it has to do it. 
if you don't have to do if you don't want to do it so you'll get old you get old yeah, you have exactly. to stay current. You have yeah. to stay with them. You want to uh, younger people listen to you? Yeah. Listen to it. So you have to do these kind of things like my videos I, I made in Instagram, you know? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going Making back? more Instagram, like being the, in the front light. Yeah, in the spotlight. In the spotlight for the people to see. And your music then, like... So, so you stay current, like making the, the videos, etc. But does that also reflect in your music? Do you also try to stay current in your music, like for those 16-year-old kids on the dance floor? Um, maybe I try, but not, uh, not like, not transform my style. I always have, since the beginning, house and techno. So, you know, I have like almost 20 years playing, so... The trends comes and buy it. Uh-huh. So this uh, it was this electro house trend. It was the first minimal trend back in fifty years ago, and then the new disco trend, uh-huh. and then the new the melodic techno. So, but my sound is always almost the same. The I try to house, yeah. I try to take this stuff from the trends. Who fits in my sound? Yeah, 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 not, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to fit in that sound. So. No, exactly. Yeah. So I keep in, I keep uh, being myself. You uh, stay true to your sound. Yeah, yeah. That, and that is and that is good because reflecting on everything, uh, every single artist needs to, you know, push himself. Yeah. You know, to keep delivering stuff that is. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, good for you, you know, like you, you need to evolve, evolve as an artist yeah. uh, and trends kind of help you do that. Yeah. You know, you can grab this from this, this from here and this from there. But in reality, uh, the artist that stays true to who he is, who she, he, she, them, them. <laughs> and everything, uh, usually it, it kind of, it's, it's, mm, Fuera del tiempo, you know, it's just like, it's just, time, yeah. yeah, you just are ever present. And that was one of the things I, I wanted to to expose with my music. My music is not trend, it's not all, it's not uh, future music, uh-huh. it's just timeless music. Yes. Timeless. timeless music to dance, to have a joy in the night. Yes. To, I don't know, to have a deep clothes. And a little Dark bit clothes. sexy, yeah. The, the yeah, house, yeah. they're like, I, I love Ruby. it. I mean, and, I love and, it. And, and, <laughs> and I, can, I can tell. I mean, I, I've yeah. listened to you a thousand times, and my friend, you are groovy. You make me dance all the time. Yeah, I, so. I always try to to explain that to all the people who likes like you know the melodic techno, dark disco. <laughs> they tell me why you didn't like those kind of 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 uh, styles, and I was like. Have no soul, man. No, doesn't have. <laughs> listen it. to the hi hats. Listen to the snares and yeah. stuff. And the house is moving all the time. This and that, and and this new trend uh, rhythms is like so square. Is like, like taka 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 yeah. taka taka taka. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but I. I, I it's just not for you. It's not for me. Yeah. It's not juicy. And that's and that's yeah, the thing. Not, I don't, it's not like, I don't like it. It's not juicy, yeah. And that's the thing. There is no bad or good music. It's just the one you like or the one you don't like. Yeah. That is that is so true. I, I think that that's one of my key words on my career, like timeless music. I love you know, that. What, the first time you saw me I play a track release in nineteen ninety seven. I mm. played five years ago, and maybe I played on Friday. Yeah, yeah. they would say they those are classics, but I prefer the timeless ones. Yeah, it, it, it's it's funny. I just this like, this past weekend we had our first. Uh, I would say back to back impromptu gig. impromptu back yeah, to back. It was it was so nice. I mean, the day before we were just talking about ah, it'd be so nice to talk to play together. I play tomorrow. Why don't you come over and? Let's just have fun, you know? Yeah. And the only things that we played was just tracks that we loved. Yeah. And, we, <laughs> and it's just so nice because, like you said, it had a timeless feel to it. Yeah. Because, you know, we weren't, we didn't escape from, from, from 
playing, you know, 80s, you know, bangers, you know, yeah. ABBA and, and Edwin and Fire and things like that. Yeah, it was eclectic you, as uh, fuck. Yeah, and, <laughs> but we also played, you know, maybe Salome de Bahia and things like that were, you know, so, so random in a way, but just so timeless. Yeah. And it just has soul. And isn't it the, the, very best part of electronic music that you yeah, know the surprises <laughs> not the <laughs> I don't wanna sound like, like I'm criticizing all the new stuff but you listen the the the, the DJ sets and, and it looks like it was all planified, you yeah. know? It's not like surprises or getting off of the path. Uh, sometimes I took in another direction. Direction just a little um, a few DJs and new DJ, new few DJs and I saw they do this kind of eclectic stuff and mm -hmm. I love it yeah. because back in the days when I start to go to Paris there was uh, one DJ here in Guadalajara who was one of my inspirations it was called Calambrin uh -huh. he used to play house electro and then some 80s electro track trans techno again and then ambient in the middle of the party so what an inspiration yeah. so many people have him as a big inspiration yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And i've never i think well maybe i heard him play for a, the last part of his set at the last set that he played at bar americas i was there and i remember he played an edit of uh, i feel love I was like, ah, it was amazing. It was just like the last 30 minutes or so of his, of his set. Yeah, he was, he was really good. Yeah. So when I started to play, I wanted to, to make those kind of, of, of sets. I remember my first, my first professional gig in a party. I closed with Trans X living on video. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. Nice. I, I was called that style and um, high energy. High energy. Was, yeah. high energy. And one of my friends was like, why do you do that? Why do you do that? You know? Yeah. It was Romeo, the midnight pervert. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, it was bad. Oh, it was cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there are people that criticize those kind of choices, though... When you watch globally what um, uh, big DJs do is they do throw in some some surprises, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I love to be creative. I mean, we are artists. I think that we're supposed to be creative, right? Of course, yeah. And yeah. I love improvisation because I come from a jazz background. So isn't it the most beautiful thing to be able to improvise yeah. during your sets? I, 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 I don't think that uh, there's an artist without that in reality. If it's everything that is, if it's everything pre-programmed and in square and yeah. everything, I don't, I don't think there's, there's yeah, room for the creativity. Is, uh, I, I think uh, social media right now program all the people to, to, to be square. So, I hey, think, the grid is I square. I think many of the DJs <laughs> try to just fill up those expectations of the people. Yeah. Yeah. So, the contrary of the you you have to do you know you you have to be creative and and first of all enjoy yourself yeah when you're playing yeah and I think this is this is bad but you know this is an industry right now it's a lot of money for so if you have ten thousand people who wanna listen to your hit track yeah you have to put it see so. Yeah, otherwise they're going to be really disappointed. Yeah. Some, some time ago, I was talking to a friend uh, just about the EDC, just came by, and he was playing over there, and I asked him, um, how how did you feel about it? He's like, good, I mean, I, I played bangers. Yeah. yeah. And th the crowd was amazing, everything was great, and how did you feel? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you play at a nice festival, very international. It's super nice, every in any way. But then you're kind of eh, limited. Yeah, I remember my first time in EDC. It was like when we were 
on our way to, to the festival, I was talking with another friend, and I don't know, mm-hmm. my friend told me that I don't know what to play, mm-hmm. you know, because the, the image you have from this festival was like masses of people, super commercial music mm-hmm. and stuff. Right. And I say like, I would play the same thing as I play at Bar Americas, but faster. <laughs> <laughs> like shorter mixes? Like sh- the, or faster at BPM? Play, if you play for... The first time we played in EDC was at Dos X stage. Mm-hmm. It was like uh, maybe 2,000, 3,000 people. Right. So you need energy. Right? Yeah. That's... Awesome. You don't have to... You, you will not play at... 123 BPMs because the people will be like ah, I yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. so I Such started like energy like faster you know yeah right 130 and, and it was really really good many people criticized me the first time I, I play at DC with ah, that's commercial stuff and I said what I'm not commercial so yeah they would pay for for, for me you to, to play yeah. commercial to play stuff? my stuff so yeah 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 fuck it Exactly. That that's why they come to see you, right? To hear your take on Well, I, to be honest, I oh, no. guess those two thousand or three thousand thousand people wasn't there for me. But after I played, I went downstairs with the people and stuff and all the people was like, Hey, what's your name? What's your name? Hey, I wanted to invite you to play there, there Nobody knows me, maybe really? five thousand people, five hundred people maybe. Right. But that's the good thing about those kind of, of festivals. Maybe those people were there for David Guetta or Tiesto or Skrylex. Right. But you know, they were passing by and that sounds good. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. here. And that's why you know new genres and maybe discover what's your thing. Uh-huh. That is, I, I would say that specifically is something that uh, we can relate from you know the the eighties, uh, you know, and those those parties that that happen, for example, like in London or in here as well. The raves that happen that happened in here uh, for the longest time, you know, it's the only thing that I can compare to. You know, you just go for the for the experience, yeah, for the experience of this, and then you find you find something, you find something yeah. different. Uh, but talking about about this you know different venues what has been your favorite venue to play at you know it's been or 20 your years favorite party my, my it's been 20 years always be and forever i think will be bar americas yeah i think bar americas will be always my favorite i don't know what happens when when i always came in to the bandi boot Always, not not just in the new bar makers and the old one, and the old three ones, you know, <laughs> because it was like three stages in the bar makers mm-hmm. and then the new one. But always, then this is the only place I, I, I can play like five or six hours uh-huh. straight, and I love to play like long sets. And here in Mexico, no doubts will be Bar Americas. Uh-huh. In South America, I love to play in Lima. Yeah. The people in Lima have uh, this kind of vibe is like kind of similar to the Mexicans. Right. But they are more like into music. They know the music you're playing. They know the artists, you know, the labels and stuff. Wow. I would and, like to play there. And they dance. Uh-huh. They really, really dance. And in Europe, I think my favorite new... I don't know if it's... It, Budapest <coughs> or Gran Canaria. <coughs> Gran Canaria? Yeah, Gran Canaria is <laughs> it's amazing. I have a really, really good friends there. Javier Caballo, Humphrey Martinez. Ah. There's an island that in Spain. Mm-hmm. You know, it's closer than Africa. But the Canarian people is more like Mexican people. The, Funny, huh? Yeah? yeah, they they don't look well. They look like uh, like Spanish. Spanish. They act like Latin Americans. They, I know Gran Canaria because of the pensionados. Yeah, the I wouldn't German expect. and Dutch people <laughs> yeah. went to live there or in the summers. See, si. 
Yeah, and they have a really, really good uh, scene there. <laughs> and they, they like that. house, they like techno. You barely not listen this kind of trends, new trends, you know, the uh -huh. melodic techno stuff. Yeah. Maybe it is, but they like house and techno. <laughs> Real techno. You know, the, this kind of Detroit or German techno. Sí. And the people is amazing. Amazing. That's do a good a, tip. Do, do you have a young crowd over there? Is yeah, but not not too young like like the like here in Mexico. Maybe from 22, 23 to maybe 40. Wow. There is all people. Well, older. Older people. Older. older people on the dance floor. <laughs> that, that makes the the dance floor a little bit more sophisticated, you know? Uh huh. To say something about. Well, Yeah. It, it is it is weird to find in Mexico something like what you said in Lima. I I don't I don't know too many people that know about labels. I don't yeah. that they just go and they have you know they have fun and have a party, right? But I don't I don't yeah, know. And it, it's, it's not bad, eh? It's not bad. bad. No, it's, it's not bad. bad. But, but it's just like being passionate about that, you know. Yeah. To know about labels, it's to know about well, your, uh, your stuff. Well, Ciudad Juarez used to be like that back in the years. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's like another younger generation is not like too much into the music. But mm -hmm. back six or eight years ago, was the same. It was If you were to play in Ciudad Juarez and the people Came to uh, see you. Uh, scream at you or giving you an applause was like, Okay, because they know, they know shit, that right? track right. Uh, was released a week ago, or that track is from the 2000s. That's so cool, huh? And like such really a cool, like yeah. a, a little vacuum like there of people who know their their yeah. shit. My friend Javier Caballo, when I like, the first time he came to Mexico, I I booked book, book him in Ciudad Juarez, and when he came back to Guadalajara, he was like. What the fuck with Ciudad Juarez? It's the first time that people ask me for a sign the flyer or that so many pi uh, pictures. Uh -huh. It was like, that's the Ciudad Juarez people. That's cool. Wow. Huh? That is so we nice. need to We need to experience that. Like, yeah. Hector invited us to, to come check out the Hard Pop. Yeah, Hard Pop is, some, is an amazing place. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. What is it that uh, has... Uh, People from all over the world listening to electronic music. What do you think that is? Because it's, it's it's a global phenomenon. It's it's became pop in a way. Popular. It's pop right now. It, yeah, yeah, right now. Electro I, I would say that be between electronic music and reggaeton, it's basically what's what's on the lists in the global lists yeah. right now. You know, there's a little bit of folkloric music of each country, but in reality, I would say it's electronic music and, and reggaeton. Yeah, and, but, and the, the pop pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is pop right now? Yeah. And uh, but I feel like when you talk about timeless music, yeah. and you play timeless music in Mexico, Guadalajara, and then you go to Lima, and then you go to Budapest, and then you go to Gran Canaria, and all the places that you that you played at, you're playing what you love. Yeah, and the people dance. Yeah, that's amazing. That's the it's best feeling in the world, I think. Do you connect? I don't have kids, but maybe the music is better than the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's just, I just find it amazing. It's an amazing phenomenon. So sometimes yeah. I, I compare it to football, you know. I, I'm very passionate about football. And I see, I, I, I don't think I see many things that can be compared To football and music is one of them yeah you, know, you mean how it creates this it's just it's just bonding all the time you know you go to africa and you listen to electronic music you go to japan and to listen to electronic music you go to uh, russia and you listen to electronic music they're their own kind but it's all electronic music it has their flavor of course yeah but it has a soul it has it has a meaning yeah and right now you know you know the electronic music always has like the this kind of futuristic vision and you know all the major labels right now are copying or trying to do the things like the electronic music or reggaeton are doing it because they they 
they stay in the past in the electronic music right now yeah take advantage of all these futuristic things that is the present you know the social media the all the new things was we have it like 10 years ago mm -hmm. but right now with social media that's why it's so huge the electronic music right now yeah, yeah. so so amazing i mean um when when we talk about our backgrounds uh, i mean Netherlands, Mexico, we've had people from France, from Canada, people that are from France and are living in the United States. And uh, say, same Hector, who right now lives in Malaga, you know, yeah. it's people from, from all, over the world. all over the world. And then yeah. I just find it amazing that we just keep on living. Yeah. There was there was a time when, when electronic music was supposed to be dead. And when was that? In the late 80s. In the late in 80s? In the late 80s. Yeah. There was a point in time. Yeah. No, no, not late 80s. Late 70s. There was a point in time that there was a, a night in the United States where they filled a, a baseball stadium with CDs, with, 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 with vinyls, and said, and, and there was news, and they turned, said, said them, exactly, they oh, sent them to disco. fire. Disco, so yeah, the, the, yeah, the yeah, disco, and, it, the, the, and and it was there was a fire, and they they burned uh, vinyls and stuff, yeah. and it was you know the night that disco died. And, yeah, the night that disco died. Yeah, 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 yeah that and, story. And yeah. it was come on, and it's been more than forty years. Yeah, you I can't think kill that it. Night, the house music started. Started. <laughs> yeah, it evolved from the disco, and it just made it to something new. It is the beat that is inside of all of us. It's that tribe feeling you, that you can't you can't diminish it. Yeah. You can't you can ignore it. You can't, you ignore, can't ignore it. it. Now we want to dance to that beat. Like, how do you feel like in Guadalajara about the the communities? Do you think there's a strong there's a strong community here in the city, or or would you like to to give it a little bit of of a push? A push could be better. There is communities, and you know when I when I start or when I, when I start to go parties. <laughs> The Guadalajara scene was like a total. That's not the right thing, you know. There was this group and this group and this group, and all the groups like attacking each other, and that's why I I can say a name from that época mm -hmm. that's the still playing right now. Just I think Luis Flores. Yeah, it's the only one. All the guys were disappearing because there was like all we like, you know, Tearing each pulling other down. down. Yeah, the cangrejo. And then <laughs> the, the the crap, right? Then yeah. you then go with the crap. Came came my generation who was like Abel Sordo, uh, Balcazar, the Midnight Perverts, and 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 others, and they started just to work. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't support you, but I don't say shit about you. So we work, we work, we work. We started to sign in international labels, started to travel in outside of Mexico, outside of Guadalajara first, and then outside of Mexico. Yeah. So that's why we start with a, a certain community. Could be better, yes. At, at this moment? Yeah, but I think... Me Mexico is, is this way all the time. <laughs> Mexico it's our, be it's, 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 our, it's, it's our culture. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I was at the party with uh, the Losh party yeah. last Sunday with Piku. I have to say, all the crews were there. Yeah. yeah. And it was lovely. I, well, I, I like that a lot. Like, it makes me really happy. Like, everybody's there. Everybody's dancing. Everybody's nice to each other. And I think, this is nice. This is good. This is what we need to keep doing. You know, I'm from outside. Yeah. So who the fuck do I think I am? But but I, I love that. And I, I love that people support each other and go to each other's parties. That's yeah, yeah. just really and great. not talking shit. Yeah, not talking shit. Like, you, sharing the good good. You vibes. maybe don't go to a party, but you keep quiet. Yeah. Oh, also that. Or you support. That, that helps. Yeah. It's because it's because not not not. Why not would you shit say shit anyway? Helps. Right? Already helps, you know. Yeah. And, and we we've talked about you know when we when we started the podcast we we talked about just sharing our stories because we we were party friends but we were not 
close friends. And when we talked about having and starting the podcast, I I, I told to, I said to Susana, uh, you need to tell me who you are, yeah. and I'm gonna tell you who I am, yeah. and we're gonna see if that works, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, but out of the most respect, you know, and 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 I feel like like in a certain way, mm, people uh, say, tend to tend to. To that little criticism that, that is not really the, uh, it doesn't really help the scene, you know. It just it just kind of pulls you down a little bit, makes you sometimes, uh, I don't know. I mean, you I'm, would think the city is big enough. Yeah. The country is big enough, right, yeah, for right. everybody right. to for have everybody, a spot, yeah. to everybody to have a space, yeah. and to work alongside each other. Uh, it's just, I, it, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I am 100% uh, uh, with you on that. So. Yeah. I mean, this space is a creation of that, you know? Yeah. And uh, on that note, well, thank you. Peter. I think the thank word you, so you say that needs the key is respect. Yeah. Respect your brother. Yeah. yeah. Respect your sister. Absolutely. This went so fast. Where, where does the time? Where is the time well, going? We're, so? we're already on to 15 minutes. So how does thank this you for work? Me yeah, thank, thank you so, so much, much really for being here. Really, really, it was great. Thank you for sharing. Pinto, uh, you have been a household name for the past almost 20 years, maybe a little bit more. Uh, you're an inspiration to all young DJs. Uh, all for, DJs too. For and for one concept that keeps popping up in this conversation timeless music timeless music you know yeah. uh, is there anything else that you would like to say uh, to everybody that is just watching us and just getting to know you I just wanted to say keep keep doing music keep dancing and that's all <laughs> keep dancing if we wanted to this is still alive keeping alive like 30, 40, 15, 16 years. We just have to go and dance to the clubs, to the parties, and keep producing music, playing music, enjoying music. Thank yes. you. Well, thank you so much for staying with us. Pinto, thank you so much for, uh, for staying guys. with us as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like the content that you're watching over here. Feel free to, uh, you know, click on that bell. And Sus and So, we're always going to be here with new content. Join us on social media. We're going to be here having amazing guests like Pinto all the time, every week here on the Red Couch. On Thank the Red so Couch. Yes. Bye, everyone. So bye bye. Thank ciao, you. ciao. Bye. Perfect. Cool.